A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. When we use the term evil, what does that mean? Usually, we apply the word to people and behavior that we deem the opposite of who we think we are. But distancing ourselves from labels like evil or monster prevents us from seeing the atrocities that all of us are capable of. Julia Shaw is a psychological scientist, and today she talks to us about how we should examine why we use these terms and what using them says about us and our society. What is the worst thing that you have ever done? Something that you're probably ashamed of. Now imagine that everybody knew about it. Your friends, your parents, your colleagues. We would hate for the world to judge us based on the worst things that we've ever done, yet we judge others in exactly this way every day. And that leads us to label people with one heinous term, evil. So first, do you think that you are evil? Now, when I ask people this question, of course, everybody says, well, no, I'm a good person. Because guess what? We all seem to think that evil is something that other people are. People like Jeffrey Dahmer, people who abduct, rape, murder, dismember other individuals. Jeffrey Dahmer was a notorious serial killer, and it's easy to see someone like this and say, I would never be capable of those kinds of things until we are, because some of us do. Now, the question here is, why do we forget the underlying humanity? When it's our turn to be the monsters, again, we see the nuance. We have an explanation. But for others, we don't see the same things. With Jeffrey Dahmer, for example, he kept pieces of his victims. Now, this sounds like an atrocious thing to do, and it's not an excuse. But as a partial explanation, when asked, why did you keep body parts from your victims? He said, I didn't want them to leave. Now, when we think of evil, we also think of torture, and we think of situations like Abu Ghraib, where human rights violations happened in a confined military space, and people were found taking pictures and posing gleefully next to individuals who they were torturing, who they were sodomizing, who they were murdering. Now, when this came to light, the public said, no, it's not a systemic problem, it's a few bad apples. It's really easy to do this to say, no, it's not a system of oppression. It's not a system that dehumanizes the people we come in contact with. It's not problems with levels and ranks. No, it's that person. It's that sadist. But when we look a bit deeper, we find that there are structures and systems in place that make it significantly more likely for us to commit heinous acts in certain situations. And then, of course, there's stereotypical versions of evil. We think of evil scientists. We think of a murderer who's laughing while he's killing his victim. We think of evil clowns. Now, these caricatures have to die, because what happens when we oversimplify a complex issue like human atrocity in this particular way, it makes it seem as though it's something that we can spot. And it's something that is so different from us that we shouldn't even try to understand it. But evil and the things that we call evil might actually be something that we're all capable of. And the line between us and people like Jeffrey Dahmer might not be as distinct as we'd like to think. In fact, many of the things that we associate with evil actually happen with surprising frequency. Some of these things happen every day. For example, in a study on murder fantasies, it was found that most people have at some point wanted to kill somebody. In one study, 73% of men admitted to having murder fantasies and 66% of women. Now, that's most of the people in this room. 
And the people you probably want to kill or have at some point wanted to kill are your parents, are your lovers, and are a very popular target, potentially your boss. Now, this in and of itself does not, of course, mean that someone is going to actually go through with a fantasy. It can remain a fantasy. But given different circumstances, given maybe enough push, enough adversity, that fantasy might turn into reality quicker than we'd think. What about the people who we love? When we think of psychopaths or serial killers, we say, no, well, how could that person have possibly killed or been aggressive to someone they love? But in a study of long-term relationships, it was found that 35% of people within these long-term couples had acted aggressively towards possibly the person they love most in the world. Aggression isn't limited to serial killers. Aggression is something that's actually quite a normal part of the human experience. So what I'm trying to say is that probably we're all heathens in some ways. We just don't think about ourselves that way conveniently. And so the big question here as a criminal psychologist, as someone who has studied why people do bad things, make bad decisions for more than a decade, I have a few favorite theories as to why we act in these ways. But my favorite theory, my favorite theory of all, that I think really helps explain the worst kinds of atrocities, that helps explain the Jeffrey Dahmers of the world, that helps explain why people in military situations can do awful things, why humans are capable, good, normal humans are capable of genocide, is dehumanizing people. Because when we stop seeing people as human beings, it makes us capable of the worst kinds of atrocity. And one of the ways that we do that is by calling people evil. When we call someone evil, we're trying to communicate to someone that this person, I don't even want to try and understand. This person is so different from me that I'm not even going to consider them a human being. I'm going to use words like monster instead. And the problem is, as Nietzsche has said in his critique of the concept of evil, is that when you start fighting with monsters, you have to be careful that you don't become the monster. Next time somebody mentions the word evil, ask them what they actually mean by that term. Because using the word evil is lazy. It's unnuanced and it's uninformed. It's time to rethink evil. Julia Shaw is the author of Evil, The Science Behind Humanity's Dark Side. She also helps employees report discrimination and harassment in their workplace. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Oxford, England. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Oxford. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.